my name is Russ Melheim uh, from The Direct. Thank you for talking with me today. Uh, great to meet you. One of the first questions that I want to ask about Monarch is, is Godzilla himself, right, who has made several appearances, obviously, in the series as a whole. What were some unique aspects of his portrayal in this series compared to the movie? Like, what are some differences or things you really wanted to do this time around? Um, yeah, I mean, like, you know, a lot of that stuff is, like, driven by the storytelling and and things like that. Like, you know, you 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 always like start thinking about what could be you read the script and you think what could be a cool shot and um you know a lot of that like comes down to the directors who then storyboard those things and then i pick that up and like try to embellish and find things in it um one of the great like opportunities we got was like you know in the the 2014 version of godzilla we have like a scene of him back back in the 50s in, in the show and we see that we see that in one of the trailers but um we get this tracking shot going up his spine and the what when we saw that storyboard come through we were like oh we're gonna need to like add a whole bunch of detail into the spines because we've never been that close to them before so the vendor rising sun added in a whole bunch of like damage and dirt and debris and things that got mixed in and you know well-placed splashes that were dripping water off the spines to help give them some scale and things and you know, th those are like the fun little things that you get to work on. Yeah. And you you just kind of hinted, hinted at it, but I wanted to ask, how exactly do you pull off such a massive CGI creation for like a blockbuster movie like Godzilla, but in a series instead? It's a lot of the same like fundamental philosophies that we were like, I, I worked as an artist on the features and, um, you know, on a couple of the features, not all of them, but, um, you know, I, I, one of the, one of my supervisors who I worked with, uh, Guillaume Real Charon, he had this, this, uh, thing that we used to do when we were looking at shots early on before we like really got into polishing the details. You look at it, you know, look at it, uh, you know, small on, on his screen and he, he'd call it the iPhone test funnily enough now, <laughs> now being on Apple. But you know, he we shrink it down and be like, okay, can can you see the detail? Do you know what's going on with this giant shot? You know, can you tell that story from a small version of it? Then you know it's a good composition, and then you can zoom back out and then yeah. start adding all the detail in. So a lot of like the same stuff that we were doing for Godzilla 2014 applied here. Like, you know, we we need to make sure that the images are clear, we need to make sure that the compositions are strong, you know, and then on top of that, this is a human drama and we need to tell it from the human point of view and so we need to make our characters part of that action as much as possible which titan in the series was the most challenging to bring to life one of the creatures that's in the trailer which is easy to talk about and is was the most challenging was is the like the star nose mole creature that we that we developed out frame store uh worked on this character a uh, vendor uh out of vancouver um and it's like you know, the, the design was really challenging. We had a lot of like, you know, we designed one thing and we were like, oh man, this, you know, like we, we got it moving in a scene and when we were in the post viz phase before we don't fully got into the shot work and we were looking at it and it's like, oh, this isn't scary enough. And so we had to do some redesigns, give it big scary teeth, you know, all these, all these things that were like, you know, really good decisions to do, but kind of tricky. And then the actual sort of technical execution of the, is this giant monster with like, you know, hundreds of plates all over its body. And like, you know, there's muscle sims tools, there's hair sim tools, there's no high resolution geometry plate sim tool. You know, you can obviously simulate all those things bouncing around, but it's like computationally really expensive. And then you need to do that with muscle and hair sim because there's little hairs sticking out of it as well. Yeah. So that like is a, an enormous creative challenge. And then beyond that, like it has a lot of screen time in the episodes and you need to give it a personality for it to be on screen that entire time. Otherwise, eventually it's going to stop being scary and real to the to the characters. So all of those things make it like a really, really challenging thing. But um, it's also the challenges are what make it, you know, one of the more one of the creatures I'm the most excited about and, you know, uh, really, really excited for people to see. Yeah.